bus stopped up here with hazards on. Okay, that was actually fantastic that it saw that hundreds of feet away. Wow, okay. That was actually a really impressive maneuver. What's up guys, it's Brandon Flash. You're joining me here with my 2023 Tesla Model Y. And recently Tesla pushed out FSD beta 12.3 to the entire fleet in North America. Uh, I've been using it for about a week now. Overall, very impressed, but want to take you guys for a drive to show you how it does, uh, give some thoughts on kind of some different behaviors. And we're just gonna go along for the ride. So as I mentioned, this is my 2023 Tesla Model Y. Pretty dirty at the moment, uh, but whatever, that shouldn't affect the results. Cameras are relatively clean. Uh, worth noting that this Model Y does have what Tesla unofficially calls Hardware 4. So you can see because of the kind of red tint on the cameras, um, and this is a 2023, and most 2023 Model Ys have Hardware 4. However, 2023 Model 3s do not. Um, but let me show you what that looks like. It doesn't tell you anything about hardware four on the screen. Go into software so you can see full self-driving computer. However, I do have uh, hardware four full self-driving capability. Mine is through September because I have some referral redemption. So thank you guys for using my referral. Um, do still have some referrals left for this year. So if you're in the market for a new Tesla, my referral link is down below. Would appreciate if uh, you use my referral. If my videos have helped with your buying decision. There you can see the FSD version 12.3.3 on 2024.3.10. And this is the full stack uh, FSD version. So uh, full neural nets, all that fun stuff. Uh, we also have auto park, so we'll probably try that out. But what we're going to do, we're at the grocery store here. Um, relatively busy parking lot, at least more so on that side. But we're gonna go to a new supercharger that's under construction. Um, then maybe somewhere else we'll see how this drive goes, uh, whether it has any complex maneuvers or anything. But I haven't done this particular route in this car before uh, on FSD. I've, of course, driven this area before. But I'm just going to take you guys for the drive. We'll see how it goes. Um, if I have to intervene, I will. If I don't have to intervene, great. And like I said, I've been using this for about a week now. Overall, I am actually pretty blown away. Uh, for those that follow you, follow me on Twitter or have seen my previous FSD video. I'm a pretty big skeptic on Tesla's FSD with current hardware. Um, however, 12.3 has me very impressed. I'm still skeptical that this will be able to work in all weather conditions uh, and actually be a driverless car or that you'll be able to like sleep or work or whatever while it's driving. However, it is very impressive. Most of my interventions lately have been just adding accelerator and for the most part, my car's been driving me everywhere I go, which is pretty wild to say. We'll see how this drive goes. Again, I haven't done this route. I don't know if it will be perfect on this route. And of course, there's all sorts of things because humans are wild drivers. Um, but without further ado, I'm going to start the recording on the mount there. Um, and then we're going to start driving. All right, you're joining me in the car. I'm putting my foot on the brake. This car just started up. <laughs> Putting it in drive, you can see the parking stall is there. I'm gonna swipe this over so you can see full screen. And I am just going to put it in drive and see how it does. There's a couple different ways to leave the parking lot. Looks like it's going for the easiest way. I'm of course covering the brake and the accelerator uh, just in case it's needed. Let's see if it goes the right way. This is a one way in front of us. Okay, it's figuring it out. Will it stop here? Kind of, okay, I'd say that's actually human behavior. What is it doing? All right, it's confusing other drivers. And overriding. I let it try to figure it out, so I'll get it in the right lane here, and now we'll let it go again. That was not the most complex intersection, but there definitely were a fair amount of moving cars. We have an unprotected left, um, with a fair amount of traffic from both directions. And of course, as we're going through this drive, I'll probably speed up some sections that don't really have anything worth noting. Um, if it's just kind of going in a straight line, you guys probably don't want to watch that whole thing. But for some of these more complex maneuvers, I will slow it down to real time and probably give some commentary like I am now. So you guys have some context of what's going on. 
All right, looks clear after this SUV here. And it hesitated, but we have a car turning right. I would have gone. All right, now it's going when it's completely clear. Not wrong, but I would say that was a very overly cautious maneuver because if it was at all busier in that intersection, it would have just sat there for far longer than it needed to. And if I wasn't recording, I probably would have done an accelerator intervention there just to get it going um, because it didn't seem to recognize that that car was turning right into the parking lot, um, even though I did. So I know that it was good to go even with the car oncoming because they were turning it right. So um, looks like we're going straight and then we'll turn left in about a mile. I'm not a huge fan of them removing the uh, trajectory line like they had previously because it kind of makes it hard to follow navigation otherwise just to make sure it's going the correct direction it seems to add it after you're through an intersection which is a little bit strange but doesn't show it when you're in an intersection this lane turns into a left turn only lane let's see if it gets over to the right like it needs to okay that was very last minute and over a solid white, which is fine. It is going over the line into the bike lane to get around that car. It was fine in that moment, but definitely a mood maneuver to be cautious with. And even if you can't, if you guys can't see the entire time, I am keeping my hands either on the wheel or very close to the wheel, ready to take over. It's worth noting that right now the speed limit is 25, but it's going 37, which is fine here because people tend to go pretty fast and Charlotte seems to not do speed enforcement. Um, but in some other areas going 12 over would definitely get you a ticket in a 25 mile an hour zone, especially if there are speed cameras. So definitely something to be cautious of with auto speed. And right now we do have it on, I believe the middle setting. Let's just see here once that. So we have it on average right now. So we're taking a left here. We have a green arrow. Well executed. It, bit of a strange that, okay. That was a bit strange. So it, turned left into the middle of the two lanes and then went into the right lane. The correct way to handle that maneuver would have been to turn into the leftmost lane and just stay there or even go wide and then go into the left lane, not go into the right lane. I think that's technically illegal in some areas. You're supposed to go into the lane that's closest to where you're turning from. Got a green arrow, or sorry, not green arrow, green light. It's definitely hugging to the right a little bit more than I would. It seems to see the change in the uh, pavement here with the curb gutter. So hopefully it stays out of that. It does seem a lot smoother around corners a lot. Kind of more refined and less jerky with just kind of a computer entering motions it actually kind of goes smooth with the turning motion okay so it's doing this thing that i've seen dubbed the uh, fsd wiggle where it kind of hesitates as it's changing lanes but that's the same kind of maneuver that i would have done personally as a driver is getting out of that long backup and into the left lane that has a lot uh, shorter lineup. Otherwise you could end up in that right lane and then maybe not even make it through the light if it's sitting too long. That was definitely not something that uh, would be condoned generally, turning right from the left lane. But I actually did just see a video of FSD doing exactly that, which was interesting. And just for context, we were in Charlotte, North Carolina, so 
Uh, roads are generally pretty well marked here. Uh, unlike some areas of the country and the roads are generally pretty smooth because we don't get much of a winter that destroys them. So this is a relatively high traffic area um, with quite a few lights. So far this is going really well once we got out of the parking lot. Let's see if it goes around this car that's kind of hanging out. We also have a car in the middle lane turning. Okay, seems to be doing well. Went through that no problem, even as the light turned yellow while we were in the middle of the intersection, which is totally normal and legal. On roads like this with undivided two lane in either direction, I tend to want to stay to the outermost lane um, just in case someone crosses the line or whatever, it seems a little bit safer. But FSD seems fine in this left lane, and I'd say at the moment it seems fine. Speeding up to go with traffic. Again, we're going 42 and a 35, but just going along with the normal speed here, so uh, auto speed doing its thing. Again, I'm not pressing the accelerator, I'm not giving any inputs, I will call out any inputs I do make. So far we're getting 249 watt hour per mile, so pretty efficient, but that's probably about what I would get to. see if it goes over to the right to get around this slower moving traffic. Yep, there we go. And there it's doing that FSD wiggle again. that it sees the turn signal on that Amazon truck. We've got a car turning in front of us. It handled that nice and smooth, didn't slam on the brakes or anything. It's not currently seeing any of the cars ahead of this SUV ahead of us. We've got a yellow light. I maybe would have gone through that if I was driving, but it went a little bit more cautious and stopped, which is probably the normal thing to do for most people. Let's see how long this light is, but it's always really wild being at an intersection, seeing the visualizations of all the cars going through it. We've got green, it went pretty much instantly, even with that red light runner. I'm not sure what kind of logic they have uh, programmed in to kind of check the intersection before going even on green, um, but hopefully they have some sort of checking so that way, in case there are red light runners or people just left in the intersection, uh, that's not just instantly going on a green. Let's see if it gets over to the left. Um, there's some cars coming to the left. You'll also notice this behavior, it slows down pretty far ahead of either the intersection or the car at an intersection, uh, and then kind of creeps up forward, which is not the best behavior. Uh, it's fine, but I think it could be refined a bit. It could slow down uh, and get a little bit closer to the inter cars in the intersection. I have a green light up here.
really poorly marked lanes here. You can barely even see the lane markings, but it was able to get over just fine. doing the wiggle again. Okay, that was hard braking. It should have gone around that car because that's actually a left turn onto the interstate rather than a left turn where we're going, which is South Tryon Street. Uh, and that, that resulted in a hard brake. Not great, uh, not a safety concern I'd say, but uh, certainly could follow the navigation a little bit better. I don't know what that hesitation was. We've got a green arrow. Let's see which lane it goes into. Okay, this time it did go into the correct lane on a left turn. It went into the left of this lane. stopped up here with hazards on. Okay, that was actually fantastic that it saw that hundreds of feet away. Wow, okay. That was actually a really impressive maneuver. I think old FSD would have just gotten really close to it and then slammed on the brakes. So it's doing the wiggle again. We've got a lane closed here, one of the right turn lanes. Okay, it's not showing the cones anymore on this version, which is weird, but it's handling it fine. Right turn, going around the cones, great maneuver there. We're getting into the complex here that the supercharger is being built at. We have an unprotected left. It hesitated a little bit, but went for it. It's not slowing down for the speed bump. Luckily, we weren't going that fast. Got a right turn. Okay, I did not override. What the heck was that? That was not in the lines at all, but it was fine. Beta does seem, or sorry, FSD Supervised, the new name, does seem to struggle quite a bit with parking lots still, uh, which I think is something that's very important for Tesla to figure out if they want these cars to truly be self-driving. Okay. And we've made it to the parking lot here. I'm going to take over just because I didn't set an exact dot of where I wanted Nav to go. And just for funsies, I'll have it demonstrate auto parking for you guys and then I'll quickly show you the supercharger site under construction. So I'll do auto park. I don't know why it's pulling forward for that. is not at all how I would do that maneuver. Autopilot speed limited due to poor visibility while in auto park. That and it's bright and sunny out. I don't understand. That's very strange. 
Let's see if it pulls forward and tries to correct itself. Oh, okay. Auto park complete. We're now in park. Anyway, well, let me take you guys outside. I'll show you the supercharger site under construction quickly. Um, and then we're going to head to another destination and continue this drive. So here we have a new supercharger site under construction. You can see four cabinets, so it's going to be a 16 stall site. Um, we've got some conduit there still. Looks like the transformer pad is all the way over there for some odd reason, which is a little bit weird. Uh, then they have the con or the trench going all the way across. I'm guessing the cabinets will be over there at the end. Uh, then you have all the posts here, so 16 stalls. Nothing too crazy here. We've got a light pole in the middle. And here you can see one of the version four, version three precast bases that Tesla uses. So rather than having to do a cast in place base for all of those, also you can tell that that stall is going to be an ADA accessible stall because it's actually set lower than the rest of them. See how the framing is set lower? So that's going to be at parking lot grade rather than raised up at a curb like the rest of them, just can tell by the boards. And then that's a precast base. You can also tell where they could mount a bollard on it uh, with that kind of triangle situation. And then there's the conduit, so that's where the power conductors will be run. And then over here we have where all the cabinets will be. So to the right will be the distribution cabinet right over there. Uh, and then these kind of four spots, that's where the actual supercharger cabinets will be to have power uh, going to the different posts. Just like that. And yeah, you can see that trench going all the way across the parking lot, um, which is very strange. I don't know why they wouldn't put the transformer over here unless the utility required that it be over there for some reason. I don't really see any overhead power lines, but there must be a reason for having it over there. And likely Tesla is going to have to build a kind of grass curb island over there to put to go around the transformer because currently those are parking spots. Um, so they'll have to do something so it's not just a transformer in the middle of the parking lot. Anyway, just a quick site tour here. I wanted to throw that in with this FSD video. All right, we're back in the car. Uh, Hopefully you guys enjoyed checking out that supercharger under construction. Let's turn the car on, foot on my brake, put it in drive. We have navigation set, so we've got a little bit of a mixed path here. Um, a little bit of a straight drive across Tyvola. Or sorry, not at Tyvola, that is, what road is that? I'm terrible with road names because navigation has ruined me. I don't actually know what road that is. Anyway, we're going straight and then there's some residential roads and kind of some mixed driving. So we'll see how uh, beta does here, or sorry, FSD supervised, the new term. We will put it into FSD, see how it does. There's a guy walking ahead of us. We'll see if it can make it out of this parking lot better than it did the last one course going to be vigilant and ready to take over this guy just driving across we've got a person there okay did well there don't actually know which way we're going out okay I guess we're going this way did not signal to get over not great but also fine what the heck is this car doing Okay, I guess we're going left here. That was not a great maneuver. If there had been other cars closer around, it would have been confusing for them. It was fine, but certainly needs improvement before it can be driverless. And you guys might think I'm being overly harsh thinking that the standard needs to be driverless, but Tesla is aiming for robo-taxi and apparently is announcing 
a robo taxi on August 8th and for a vehicle to be a robo taxi it has to have software that can handle all situations essentially flawlessly again we have the speed bump here it's not slowing down for it you can't just have a human take over in a robo taxi that doesn't have a human in it in the driver's seat or doesn't have a steering wheel so uh, either they're going to have a different sensor suite to improve or they're going to use the same sensor suite um, and it will have to function 100% of the time. Until then, it is a handy driver assistance system, but is not self-driving. But I must say, this 12.3 version of FSD is the first time that I've found that FSD is actually useful and not more stressful than just driving myself. What is it doing here? Okay, that was confusing for other drivers pulling up. It wanted to get over, but there was cars coming. It didn't realize that. Then it went back. It aborted, but the turn signal was already on. Definitely could have been confusing for other drivers. Not ideal. With that said, not a safety concern. There are plenty of teenagers that could have done worse. Ooh, Bolt uh, Domino's delivery van. So, right now, I'd say in a lot of circumstances, FSD is like a teenager driving that is kind of unsure of what they're doing, not the most confident, but sometimes also more confident than it should be, oftentimes using more accelerator than it should, uh, and sometimes just being a little generally confused. But again, with the teenager driving, uh, at least if you have your driver's permit, you have to have an adult in the vehicle to kind of guide you, and that's kind of where we're at with FSD, is that uh, you're the adult to the teenager, if you will. Not so much taking over with the teenager, but definitely giving some guidance and maybe uh, grabbing a wheel if needed, and that's kind of what you do with FSD. Yeah, definitely not a fan of them not having the trajectory line anymore. Hopefully they add that back in future versions. Hopefully that was just an unintended regression in visualizations. Just noticing that uh, it doesn't show the chill mode that the vehicle is in when you're in FSD. Here we're going 47 and 45, seems fine to me. Right lane is apparently closed ahead. It's not visualizing either of those signs. I don't know if it's taking that into account or if it will wait until the last minute. That may have also been just a temporary thing for this, those trucks there, or those uh, machines there. So it may not have actually been relevant. Yeah, I'm not seeing any closures ahead that would be impactful to us. can see we're going pretty much exactly with traffic as far as speed. Going over. Did it before the intersection, which is good. Previous 12.3, uh, just 12.3 straight, not 12.3.3, uh, would actually sometimes change lanes in the middle of an intersection, which is it not legal in some places and definitely not recommended in most places. Okay, got over preemptively with this left turn only lane, which was good. Turning right in 0.1 miles. Here we have the right turn. Okay, that was actually very well executed. Got over just at the right moment. Uh, carried speed through the corner, didn't slow down unnecessarily. Very well done. 
So auto speed seems to do a good job. It's actually slowing down because it had these crosswalks and then we also have the traffic calming of the trees in the middle here to slow people down. Um, so overall, good job on speed management there. I do think with auto speed, there needs to be a way to override without having to actually disengage. Good job not slowing down more than it needed to there. As the light turned green, it actually stopped uh, decelerating and actually accelerated again. Didn't have to complete the maneuver or anything before it would do that. Again, this is a route I haven't done either. I've maybe driven parts of this, um, but certainly not on FSD. And these are pretty normal surface street kind of drives that I would do around town in Charlotte. And you might ask why I'm not doing any interstate or highway driving, and that's because uh, FSD is still using the 11.4.9 stack for interstate, uh, which means it's not on the full N10 neural nets quite yet, so that wouldn't necessarily be indicative of any changes. So we had some railroad tracks that it slowed down for. Uh, we have a green arrow ahead for the right turn, and it is going, it's not stopping, good. So when they make it fully end-to-end, -end, I might make a video with 12.3's interstate stack, but right now it's no different than it was before. And the reason you can tell that it switches stacks when it's on the interstate is because it will give you the little message about why it's doing the maneuver that it's doing uh, and will also stop auto speed at that point. So it reverts back to the max speed similar to autopilot. So there it was another FSD wiggle before it went into this lane to turn left. And it's again doing the slowdown way ahead of where it needs to actually stop for the lane. We also have a pretty long distance here to the car ahead, probably half a car or so, maybe even a little bit more. So the car ahead of us is pulling forward. Okay, it is pulling forward, but still stopping pretty short. Green arrow for the left turn. I'm also pretty impressed that we have not had a single nag. I am wearing sunglasses, which seems to improve FSD performance. I don't think it can see through them as well uh, to do the eye tracking, but I have been looking forward this entire time, of course. Uh, it has not nagged me once, and I'm also barely touching the steering wheel, so I don't think it's detecting my hands on the wheel. It's just doing its thing. So it's actually crossing that yellow very slightly there because the car to the right was also crossing their line. Uh, there was no oncoming car, so it must have just determined that was safe. And you could also tell from the worn out yellow lines that that's a very common thing that happens at that turn. Driving to Foods shortly. Let's see how it does as we get into the parking lot. I must say I wish uh, FSD had a way to avoid potholes because they can be pretty jarring sometimes. And I would imagine Whole Foods is going to be quite busy today on a Saturday afternoon. Oh, and it looks like they're tearing up half the parking lot. Let's see how it handles this. Okay, it's going into the basement. Let's see how it handles that. So this is, it's going underground now. I have never done this before with FSD, so we'll see how it handles it. It's 
This is not on nav at all at this point. There's a car behind us, not super close though. So let's see what, how long it goes on for when it decides to end nav, all that fun stuff. Seems to just be crawling along now, which is not great, but it's not hitting anything. So I'll let it do its thing. Hopefully you guys can still see relatively decently. These are one ways and it's going the correct way. I would probably park there if I was driving. It's still in drive, but it seems stuck. Let's see what happens if I just give it a little throttle. Okay, we're not hitting the wall, which is good. Okay, it is stuck. I'm going to park and then we're going to wrap up this video. Okay, it does see that as a parking spot, which is good. But I'm just going to go ahead and park myself. Thank you guys for watching this video. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed. Uh, really curious to hear what you guys think of FSD Beta 12.3 and whether you think it was... A big improvement or whether you're underwhelmed of course different areas have different road markings and that can make a huge difference in how uh, fsd performs but if you have it comment down below what you're thinking overall i'm really impressed with it i think it's a huge leap and actually gives me i'd say a hesitant i'm hesitantly optimistic about the future of fsd after this update whereas before i was overall a bit pessimistic maybe um somewhere in the pessimistic to realist category of it not being possible with the current sensor suite. And my car is a vision only car, so no ultrasonic sensors, uh, no radar, only cameras. Uh, and it did all that. So we had two completely intervention or disengagement free drives aside from the very beginning in the parking lot. Not sure if that would be fully counted. I'd say if we're going for a full self-driving future with a car without a driver, it does need to be able to handle those scenarios. But once we were on the roads, it was able to handle everything. I didn't have a single disengagement, single intervention. And overall, it was a very smooth drive. No pissed off drivers or anything like that. If you haven't already, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. See you guys on the next one.